Hello everybody, Southwest Florida Mike here again, and you're watching All Vapor No Smoke. Um, I've had a bunch of requests for a wiring video. Um, I have finally done one. Uh, please bear with me because my camera isn't that great. I did the best that I could with what I had. Anyway, this is the pipe that I've just completed. And it's a standard uh, negative and positive with a spring cap switch. Okay, it's nothing more than an axle cap off a kid's tricycle with a with a spring soldered in the base. Not the most pretty looking switch in the world, but they are very effective and they work very well. Magnet cap, then 18350 battery, positive in the base. This is mine, uh, it's not going anywhere. I built this to hold the Phoenix atomizer and other tanks. Uh, the Phoenix is a little smaller than the diameter of the shank. The tanks fit in there perfect. It looks nice and flush. You'll see that. I have a short slideshow in here where I showed you how I put it together, some of the woodwork that I did on it, and then it goes into the video on how I put it together. So with all that said, let's get started. Okay, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna try to do this on my desk, my crappy desk. First, let me clear out some of this other stuff. I got some other pipes that I'm working on for people right now. Uh, some extensions. I got some wood bases. What you're going to need to get started on this is obviously your, your unit. Take your lid off, put it to the side. You don't need it right now. What I like to do before I get into any wiring at all is I take a 510 connector which is this is an old crappy one I don't use I messed up the solder on it I make sure that it's going to fit in that hole snug but not too snug to where I'm not going to be able to manipulate it in and out um, because you don't want to put the one that you have pre-wired in there and get it stuck and mess up the shank so just make sure everything fits all your components fit together before you try and put anything together so now that I've done that I have a 510 connection which I have already pre-wired. I may have shown you these before, um, how I do it. My camera is not going to focus, it is a piece of crap. But basically there is a uh, heat shrink on the positive to the back of the connection and then there's a second piece of heat shrink that covers both wires as they come out. It gives it a little bit of stability. Now obviously these wires are very long. I don't need this much, so I kind of I got to get a lot of eyeballing going on here. So I kind of eyeball that positive wire from where the uh, connector is going to sit at the end, about center. You want we want it to you want the wire you want to cut the wire to where it's going to be just past the center of the hole um, on where your battery is going to sit because you have to put a positive terminal down there now. You don't have to, I mean, you can, it's not the most aesthetically pleasing looking way to do it, but you could just cut the wire, fold it over, put a solder glob on it. That's going to make the connection, but it's not going to last. Eventually that solder will break off and crap out. So I got to get my measurement here. I don't want to cut too much off. I'd rather do it a little bit at a time. So if I make a mistake, I can just cut more back. And I usually end up rolling the wire, and I'll show you that in a minute. And I should be using wire cutters, but the scissors will work. I like to use solid wire um, for these mods. I don't like to use braided wire, simply because I have to manipulate the wire and bend it and have it hold its shape when I do it. And of course, this is my multi-tool here. I'm going to strip the wire back to make sure I got my measurements right. Eyeball it again, like eyeball it again. Measure twice and cut once. Measure twice. 
twice and cut once. I want to take about half that rubber off of there. So I'm going to strip my wire. This is probably not the safest way to do it, but nobody ever accused me of being the uh, sharpest pencil in the box. I strip my wire off. I'm trying to do this quickly for the time's sake of the video, but at the same time not screw up what I'm doing and have to start all over again, because if I have to start all over again, I'm going to be pissed. So here we go. Now, this gets a little bit of a pain in the butt, because you need to leave the black wire, the negative wire, you need to leave that long. It has to be able to come all the way up out the top of the pipe and wrap around the top. So we're going to bend it up so I can fit it in the hole. Get it in the hole. There you go. Goofy ass. And of course, do I have my tweezers? No, I don't. You are not prepared, jackass. Give me just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, here we go. Now I'm prepared. I got my handy dandy tweezers, needle nose pliers, work just as well. You notice it got a little bit brighter. I kind of opened up the shade. I need a little, little bit more light on this so I can see what I'm doing. Um, I pulled it through and I seated the 510 where it needs to be. Sorry, my camera isn't all that great. But you see the positive wire sticking out the top and down on the base. I don't know if you can see it, it's not a lot of light. My negative wire is laying on the bottom. Okay, now I stripped enough wire off of this so that I can wrap it around a positive connection uh, when I'm going to use it at the base. And for that, actually, all I use are these little connectors, these little tiny, they're like, I don't know what you call them, they look like miniature forks. That's it. Uh, the wire goes into the end of it where the hole is, I crimp it off. I bend those forks over so that when it's sitting there it kind of sits up a little bit and that makes the connection with the end. So let me do that and I'll show you what that will look like. Alright, here we go. All I did was take that little connector, crimp it onto the end of the wire, and wrap the wire around it. Now, one of these days I'm going to get a quality freaking camera so that you can see things a lot better. But that basically is all it is. There's no solder involved. You don't have to uh, be a professional electrician to do this. This is probably not the safest way to do it, but this pipe is for me. This isn't going anywhere else. So I'm comfortable with it. So that's how I'm going to do it. So there. Well, anyway, well, that's it. That's the entire wiring assembly right there. There's your 510 connection with your positive for the base of the pipe and your negative that goes to the top. We're going to put it in. And you gotta put your negative wire in force first, obviously, because it's 500 feet long. This is good stiff wire. I like this wire. It's easy to mold. Easily shaped. Holds its position. Pull it through. Now this can be the tricky part because now I've gotta get this fat connector into the pipe. Sometimes it can be stubborn because my holes are never exactly perfect. So we're going to help a little bit from this end. Oh, it's going to go in. Just got to fight with it a little bit. There we go. There we go. Let's see what that looks like. There we are. Pull my negative. Lead up. Okay. I don't know if you can see down in there or not. That's it. Down on the bottom. That's what makes the positive connection with the positive part of the battery. Okay. Now, you have to do something with this negative. Leave it out about halfway right about where my fingers are. You want to leave out about, oh, I'd say that's about four inches. Strip all of the rubber off of the wire all the way back to this part of the pipe. Now, we first want to pull it taut. 
what I like to do, I, I put a groove, there is a groove that runs down the front of this pipe. And I'll just use something where I can hold this flat, make the wire bend up against the front of the pipe. It's going to hold itself there. Now I should be able to just drop my battery right in. And I can. And I can hear it when it hits. It hits that positive on the bottom. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera. One more time. You can hear it hit. Metal to metal contact. That's a good sign. And I've left myself plenty of room on the top for a spring. Okay. Take the battery back out. Now, it's better to strip this wire before you glue it to the side of the mod. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and I will come back and show you what that looks like in a moment. There you go. Now I've stripped all of the rubber off of the wire right to the very top of the entrance of the pipe. And I'm going to glue the wire now to the side of the pipe so it does not interfere with the battery and it's not flopping around in there. So let me do that now. Let me do that now. glue. I am using the standard soup glue. Nothing fancy. Pick it up anywhere. Office Max grocery store. Nothing too crazy. Pretty easy. I let that glue run down the groove that I dug into place the wire rest into. Okay. And I take that wire and I use something, pencil, anything long that'll go down the hole to hold the wire in place while it dries. So let's give that a minute, shall we? Okay, there we go. I got my wire glued. It's glued to that front wall right there. That way it's out of the way. The battery doesn't hit it. I want to make sure that we have good clearance with the battery. You can still hear it making good metal to metal contact with that bottom. You're ready to go, man. You're ready to put your negative ring in place. Now, here's where the guide ring comes into play. I used copper, so it's a fairly decent conductive wire. Now I want to mold this wire to the inside of this ring. I want to press fit it right up against it. If it goes all the way around more than once that's okay, it doesn't matter. Once it's making contact it's making a negative connection all the way around which is nice because your your buttons like to spin so it really doesn't matter exactly where your button is making contact with that negative ring it's going to make a connection. Okay. Now this gets a little bit tricky I'm trying to mold this into place. That's not all I do. Um, and by the way, you don't have to use solid wire. You can use braided wire. Some people find braided wire easier to manipulate and put into place. I like to use the solid. And when I'm done, I'll put a couple, just a couple, couple glue drops in there just to hold that wire in place and keep its shape so that I can later go back and solder on top of this to hold it in place. Now the solder will actually channel itself. You can see there's a distinction between those two wires. Well, right along these two wires it created like a little groove all the way around here. So when I put a solder blob in there and heat it up, the solder liquefies and just follows the ring all the way around the top. So you don't have to be a master solder or a uh, electrician to make a solder ring across the top. Let the solder flow in and do the work for you. Um, that's going to be difficult for me to do on camera because I got big fat hands and I have to sit right over top of it to do it and you won't see it from the side. So I'm going to glue this in real quick and when we come back I'll show you what that 
will look like when it's ready to be soldered. Okay, alrighty, here we go. I put the solder ring on the inside, or I put the, I'm sorry, the negative ring wire is running along that guide ring, and you see your positive down on the bottom. Now, I haven't done the solder ring on the top, but this will fire. It's technically a done, assembled deal, man. You're ready to go. If I can find out how my magnets line. There we go. Battery's in. Throw my Addy on. Look at that. Vapes like a freaking champ. Gotta love that. Freight train vapor, baby. Awesome. This is vaping in its simplest form. A negative, a positive, a power source, and your switch. That's it. It doesn't get any simpler than this. Um, I'm not the kind of person that gets into, well, I say that now, but I probably will down the road. I don't get a whole big kick out of making variable voltage or variable wattage devices. I may make pipes with a negative ring on the inside of the battery chamber so that I can use a kick, maybe variable wattage. Um, but to make these variable voltage is kind of unpractical, especially since variable, especially since the wattage is a, a much more efficient way of doing it. You're, you're, you have a wider range of things that you can use on here without making any any mistakes in burning burning up equipment. The, the wattage is actually a much better way to do it than variable voltage. So let me throw a solder ring on in this and we'll put it all together and I'll show you what it looks like up against my ugly mug. Be right back. So what did you think of my Elmer FUD coat? <laughs> that is... I live in Florida so there really isn't a lot of need for a jacket. I've had that plaid jacket for years. Um, I got it from my wife's grandfather about 15 years ago and I love it to death man it's my favorite coat call it my Elmer foot coat but that was it that was the complete wiring of these things they're very simple uh, step by step and by the numbers these are the extensions that I make for them um, they'll hold a 510 drip tip in the bottom so that you could put them in your atomizer your tank or whatever you're doing and I'm using a 306 for the top it'll hold pretty much anything you want it depends on how you shape it but it just pops right in done deal good um, I like these. They give the vapor a chance to expand before they get to the top, and it really changes the flavor. <clears throat> it gives you more of a full vape. Plus, it gives me the complete look, what I'm looking for in a nice long, long shank. When you're doing these, though, I suggest that you don't use wood stain. Um, the wood stain smells, and it takes a very long time for that odor to go away and you taste it. When you're vaping through these, you'll taste that wood stain. It's kind of nasty. So what I use is, believe it or not, clothing dye. Rit dye for clothes. Gets these amazing colors. You can mix them together, blend them together, keep them in a cup, cover them up, and uh, you can always reuse it. I mean, it lasts a while. It's dye. And you can get all kinds of crazy flamboyant colors out of it. And the stains, like I said, the smell, the odor, it takes a while for it to go away. And I went to the Rit dye and uh, it goes away almost instantly and you don't get any funky taste or smells while you're vaping on your pipe. Well, if there's any questions, please uh, shoot me some comments. Let me know what you think. If there's anything else you want to see, anything I left out, um, let me know. Other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.